All right, you've been sticking with us. Last time we showed you part one of the framing project. Now we're moving on to putting the frame walls up. And then also I'll show you the base. Let's talk about it. Man, all praise to the Most High Yah for waking us up this morning. Had a good little bit of help from my son, you know, nephew today, and we made some great progress, uh, which is part two of this. I didn't, I didn't uh, get to record building the base because I just got after it. But uh, all praise to the Most High Yah for letting us get this far as we got today. So check this out. All right, so here we are right here. This is gonna be our little goat shelter. We'll probably put some storage shelf in there. Um, we might put a couple egg uh, egg laying boxes in there because I gotta build a, another enclosure on this that the chickens um, can doggone hang out in but that's gonna be part two so the last time you look at part one i'll put this in a part one in the corner of the video towards the end if you want to catch that but we did the framing did four walls on ground built them on the ground in my driveway uh 16 studs are 16 inches on center and then um it's a good thing man for people that don't think you need math you know i was telling my sons that they call these posts two by four but when you measure them, this is only like an inch and three fourths. This right here, length is supposed to be four, but it's actually three and a half. And then when you look at the, the length of the board, oftentimes they're a little bit over, sometimes even under. So if you don't uh, understand fractions, then it'll be very challenging, very difficult. You can see we got them all together. And then uh, I got the top hats, top plates, up there i gotta trim it uh gotta get my longer ladder gotta trim it um the end but we anchored those in the top plate so it is you see how we uh fasten those down right there got those in there i need to come back and put some more in there but got those in there and then got a bracing plate right here to stabilize and i might in all actuality put a bracing plate on the inside once i'm done because like i said this is my first time doing this all praise to the most high yah you know if i would have had this uh wisdom when i was building my greenhouse man i would have done it this way um a little bit more structurally sound yep and you see there's a lot of there's a if you it's your first time doing it when you think about that OSB, they come in four by eight sheets, but once you marry uh, two walls together on both sides, see how I got this one wall is for this run, this board right here is for this run. So when you take this three, um, this three and a half inches, put it and add it to an eight foot board. So now you're adding a total of, now your total length is like, eight feet seven inches and you have to calculate that so if you take two pieces of osb and try to put them together and think you got enough you end up with a gap so you see i ran another joist under there so i can come and put a a, a piece right in there or just lay another board on top because ain't gonna be nothing but my goats in there but that's why math is important that's why measuring your wood and you can see i used uh i used some wood that i got for free and it will do the job. Now, the crown and the, the angle of the boards is not the best, but it will hold up. Looking at it, I can tell, okay, uh, it's kind of out of, it's not plumb, but it's slightly off, but it'll do, I can tighten that up. I'll show you this entrance way. This is the uh, entrance way right here. So I will put my goat door right here i'll put the walkthrough door right here 
and that'll give us a uh, eight by eight space. And then the next task is to put a lean to roof. I'm going to do that one because, man, I don't understand if anybody knows any good um, gable roof tutorials or anything like that, you know, I'd greatly appreciate that. You know, drop a link in the comments, comment down below. But um, I'm going to do a lean to because it's it's like the beginner phase of roofing. If you can do a lean to and do that good, then you can eventually move on to the gable roof, uh, which has uh it points up to it like a like a point at the top but um eventually man i'm gonna learn how to make some rafters common rafters and uh be able to do that because this ain't the this ain't the the end of the building project and you think about this if you go to lowe's or home depot your box office store look for one of those little thin rinky dink sheds man you're gonna pay about 600 bucks uh, just for that and then you still got to get it home and put it together you can pay somebody to do it but by the time you do that you're looking at 300 400 dollars delivery so you out of a thousand bucks already and when you think about in materials with the lumber that i have you know i got about 500 bucks 570 bucks worth of lumber probably about another uh probably about another hundred to go so i'll be at 600 and I'll show you these little, uh, I don't know what these panels are called, but I got my roofing material. Let me show you these. I bought a stack of these, those right there. So I'm gonna use that for the roof. I bought a bundle of those. Got the little grates that they doggone go in. So we'll do that. And then I got the, uh, I got a piece to go over a gable, but I need to do some more research on that before I actually do it. Check out the goats, man. When, it, when they say goats like stuff to climb and play on, they've been jumping up here all day long. Look at the little baby goats. Oh, yeah. Man, uh, probably about two, two Saturdays ago, man, on the Sabbath, Man, uh, I came out, and it was in the evening time, and I realized, I was like, man, what is this dog on cat? And no, man, you know, our, uh, what you doing, Billy? That's the daddy right there. That's the mama. But I came out, man. Uh, sunset was going, sun was going down. Almost, you know, sundown on the Sabbath. And I realized she had kids. And that's where the term kids come from. When you think about kids and you think about physical children, no, nah, the term actually historically comes from goats because they're called kids. So there you have it. Eventually, man, I'm going to open this up a little bit more. Might give them some more rooming because if they can eat this stuff, then that will uh, cut down on food costs and they like it. You see how they just graze? Even the little babies doing the same thing. But there you have it right there. And that's what we're going to call it quits for the day. And um, man, you know, when I did these, when I did the, the 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 flooring on this one, like I said, because of the math, the way when you calculate the length of lumber, you have to calculate actual raw cut length of lumber versus what you bought. So you don't end up with a gap. Um, so that was a definitely a, a positive, a pro um, coming out of it. Now I have the knowledge to know, okay, next time I got to calculate for that. Maybe I cut my walls a little bit short to get a total length of eight feet all the way around but what i did was i pretty much took four uh two by six by fours put them on these little anchor plates right here and i squared them up by measuring diagonal and make sure my measurement was the same across and i think i got like 71 across diagonal both ways 71 72 somewhere in there and then once I got that nice and square, I took my level and I put it on every, the middle of every one and raised it up as I, as I needed to. Um, probably could have put, you know, some people dig holes and compact it and put uh, uh, gravel or compressed rock up under there, but I didn't even do all that, you know. Um, then from there, from the floor, 
uh i made sure the osb fit you know wasn't the 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 square wasn't crooked once i got my measurement i validated that by putting the osb on there and then um i used joist hangers i actually bought the wrong joist hangers i actually bought uh six inch joist hangers where i should have bought um should have bought four inch joist hangers and i ran them 16 inches on center but you see um, doing 16 inches on center on a board that's longer than eight feet throws your measurement off and you're left with that gap right there. That gap right there. But there you have it, man. You know, being on a homestead, you have nothing but time to doggone learn uh, the basics of doing this stuff because by the time I buy one this size, this uh level of sturdiness and rigid you know you're going to be paying probably about 1500 two grand then you got to pay delivery then you got to pay somebody to install it when you can you know for a third of the cost build something to your liking your dimension you're not going to get it perfect every time you know but definitely a learning process and thankful for the most high y'all giving me the strength to be able to do it be able to have these boys out here teach them the basics because they're at the age where they're like, man, this math sucks. And I remember that. But learning how to actually use the fractions and stuff that they're learning, man, it equates to a tape measure, you know, a uh, a speed square, knowing how to take those fractions and add them and stuff like that and how to do angles, acute and obtuse angles. Man, all that stuff has a, has a purpose. And you have people out here making good money, but I do this in my free time so it's not so expensive and uh, me and my wife don't have to pay so much and constantly rely on uh, the system for help. And if we learn how to build stuff, you know, we can build on our own. And that way, don't get caught with these labor, these uh, expensive labor costs behind building. You know, let me see. Got the uh, the bracing joints. I put those on there once I had it square. That way the wall didn't shift. But, you know, definitely room for improvement. You know, I can see little quarter inch angles where it's not flush as it should be. But man, once I get these for part three, you're gonna, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with some pallets. We're gonna take some, uh, some pallets that I'm gonna get for free. I'm gonna pull them apart. And that right there is gonna save me a lot of money, but it's gonna be labor intensive to get the wood cause I gotta take the pallets apart. But I'm going to take the pallets apart and then um, those are going to be my walls. So that might be part three or part four. I got to figure this roof out before I before I jump to that. Probably go get the pallets tomorrow. But just wanted to share that with you guys. Man, make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if, man, you haven't already done so. You know, coming to watch this Rocker Family Homestead uh, video. It's like, man, us inviting you in our house, you coming in, eating all our food and not even saying thank you. At a bare minimum, hit that like button. All praise goes to the Most High, y'all. Thank you for tuning in to this episode. Man, have a blessed day, a blessed morning, a blessed evening. Rocker Family Homestead, out.